let's meet with a man who has been described as a politician, businessman, and civic leader with a long history serving San Diego. I recently had the honor of sitting down to speak with one of San Diego's philanthropic and civic leaders, Tom Holm, and his wife, Loretta. Hi, Tom. Thanks for meeting me today. Happy to be here. I have to say you've created quite a legacy for political involvement, being the first minority to be elected for the City Council of San Diego. Yes, but that was a long time ago, <laughs> 1963. 1963. Oh, great. First minority elected on a city council. And weren't you the first Asian American to be elected for the California State Assembly as well? No, I was the second, but I was the first on the city council. And, and how did you get involved with politics? Well, probably my first sense of politics when my dad told me, uh, pointing to City Hall, that uh, he said, Tom, uh, the kind of laws that come out of there is dependent upon the people that is put in there. Mm -hmm. And so that impressed me. Oh, would it be safe to say that then your role model growing up will be your father? Yes, yes, definitely my father. I don't think I'm exaggerating if I were to say that uh, you were the very person responsible for the transformation of this uh, San Diego downtown. Well, uh, I was involved, yes. <laughs> uh, very much involved, especially in the gas lamp area. Mm -hmm. Gas lamp then was known as Skid Row, and we turned it around, and today is a thriving part of downtown today. Well, I'm very familiar with the area, mm -hmm. as that was located next to Chinatown. Oh, Chinatown. So, so through the years, I've seen it deteriorate. And uh, so uh, when a group came to see me, later when I uh, retired from government, they asked me uh, how they can d turn the area around. And so uh, we went to work on that. Tell me about your life back then. What was it like? Well, you know, born in Chinatown, 1927, mm -hmm. a long mm -hmm. time ago. At, at that time, China, Chinatown was a self-contained community, mm -hmm. and uh, society, it was, uh, let's say, segregated, perhaps, uh, and uh, whether some were legal or de facto, but it was still somewhat segregation. Mm -hmm. But as time evolved, things changed. Right. And uh, uh, that's one of the areas why I wanted to become involved Mm -hmm. in uh, civic engagement, running for public office, uh, helping to change this, uh, these things around. I wish we could see a lot more minority, like Asian Americans getting involved with, in civic engagement. So how can we get more people to get involved? I think you work with the young people, mm -hmm. the young people, uh, the, uh, the more recent immigrants, uh, they, they, they're raising family, and their first responsibility is provide for them. But this is the next generation. We're well into the next generation mm -hmm. today. We're into second, third generation now. These are the young people we want to get them more engaged. And I see that. I, I see a number of them. They're beginning to run for public office and serve in, in uh, let's say, nonprofit groups and donating their time in various areas. And that's part of civic engagement. Yes. And from there, they can run for politics or whatever the case is. Just be in, become involved. And I know that you've published a book. Is it an autobiography? It's called uh, Rabbit on a Bumpy Road, I believe? Yes, and I, I have 55 years of diary. <laughs> and I'm 87 years old, so I have a lot of uh, material to work with. Mm -hmm. So I finally got around. It took me three years. I wrote the book, wow. Rabbit on a Bumpy Road, my memoirs. It talks about the time when I was born in Chinatown, mm -hmm. and then it transcends to, to present day. So if the viewers want to get a copy of your book, where can they go? Is it in the bookstores or online? Oh, yeah, it's in a bookstore like Barnes & Noble, oh. Warwick and La Jolla, and, and Amazon, and uh, e-book, e and mm -hmm. uh, so it's available. You're affiliated with over 15 organizations and nonprofits. I see you in the community events all the time. I, I, I try to schedule it. <laughs> Sometimes I don't make all the meetings but uh, I try and keep up with them. And I think it's important. Mm -hmm. It's uh, fulfilling yes. for me, and at the same time, provide some service. And I also heard that you're quite a cook. <laughs> well, <laughs> cooking is one of my hobby, along mm -hmm. with painting. Mm -hmm. I paint watercolor and oil. Wow. So, uh, and play piano, that's another hobby as well. 
So I You're try quite the multi talented person. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I just want to keep busy and I enjoy these things. Then I know you volunteer your time to cook as well in the church. Yes, well, <laughs> I enjoy cooking. I, when I do cook, we cook for about 150 people. Wow. So I do hope that you spend some time with your lovely wife. <laughs> oh, I do, I do, I do. We, we make time mm -hmm. for, for each other. Oh, that's wonderful. And speaking of uh, your wife, I think she's busy in the kitchen, isn't she? Yes, yes, she, she's my better half, let's <laughs> say that. And Maybe we'll pay her a visit <laughs> and uh, see what she's up to. Okay, great. Kathleen, let me introduce my wife, Loretta, to you. Very nice meeting you, finally. It's my pleasure to meet you, too. How often do you volunteer in a church? Do you spend a lot of time here? We do. Every Sunday, um, we serve lunch to about 150 people, 125 to 150 people, uh -huh. and, and he's one of the regular chefs. Wow. <laughs> and I'm here because um, I'm in charge of the kitchen. Well, thank you so much for being on Asian Voices and for sharing your inspiring stories with us. Well, thank it was our pleasure. Thank you, Kathleen. I'm sure I'll see you in one of the upcoming community events as well. Right, you will. All right. Thank well, you. stay healthy, and I wish you all the best to both of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kathleen.